You want to start a business, but the problem is you're poor. You have close to no money to get started. But don't worry, times have changed. Today, you can build a fully fledged SaaS business on a budget. And in this video, I'll show you how. I'll cover which tools you need to build and run your SaaS, and I'll cover which marketing channels you need to grow it. And I'll give you entirely free or at least the cheapest versions of all of them. Let's go. If you're new to this channel, welcome here. I'm Simon Harberg, founder of a SaaS portfolio consisting of four profitable and entirely bootstrapped SaaS products. My products are generating more than a million dollars per year, and I can proudly say that I never raised a single dollar in funding. So I know how important it is to balance growth, operations, and a tight cost control. And with that said, let's start by talking about product and operations. I'll cover this from both a coding and a no-code perspective. First and foremost, you need a website. All businesses need a website. And there are various great options here. Some build their websites from scratch using Next.js and host it on Vercel. Others build it using no-code tools like Webflow or Framer. But the problem is, they all get expensive fairly fast, some with fixed costs and others with increasing prices as traffic goes up. And since cost is our main focus, I would go in a completely different direction. I would host my website on GitHub pages, which is completely free. It's been around for a long time, but I still often meet people who are not aware that you can actually turn your GitHub repository into a website totally free of charge. No surprise fees, no bandwidth limitations, and no hidden charges. Your website will be powered by GitHub's global CDN, which is really reliable and really fast. Now, you have two options. If you're a programmer and you prefer coding your website from scratch, you can use a static site generator like Next.js. If you're a no-code person and you prefer a no-code tool, I suggest taking a look at this excellent template generator called Shuffle. Go to shuffle.dev. Now you can create your website in a no-code editor and then export the whole thing so it's ready to be hosted on GitHub pages. You can buy access to Shuffle on a lifetime deal, but you can also upgrade just for a single month, export the site, and then downgrade. In theory, you can do the same with Webflow, Framer, and so on. They also support exporting your code. I've done it a few times, and the code it exports is a crazy mess. Webflow is the worst one here. It's really, really not elegant at all. I recommend Shuffle because it's really easy to use and because the code it exports is very tidy and very nicely organized. You can have a website running in a few hours this way. Now we need a place to host the SaaS product too, which is typically some form of dynamic web app. Again, I see a lot of people opting for services like Vercel, Superbase, Heroku, and so on. But here's the thing. I generally wouldn't recommend using these services. And since cost is our priority here, I most certainly wouldn't recommend them. All of these tools run on the cloud provider AWS under the hood, and they put a pretty aggressive margin on top of cost. When I acquired TinyKiwi, one of the SaaS products in my portfolio, it was running on Superbase, and it cost us almost $160 per month to run this simple, small tool. And Superbase would crash all the time, making it an unbearable user experience for many of our users. We migrated the whole thing to AWS, which is what Superbase is already using. They just have a more polished UI on top. And the cost is now around $12 per month from $160 to $12 per month. Imagine how this would look if the tool massively scaled. <sighs> hey, if you can afford it and you think their UI on top makes your life that much easier, by all means. But since cost is our main priority in this video, here's what I would do instead. If you want to build your solution on the cloud, use either of the three big ones that power mostly all cloud solutions today. It's AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure. All other cloud tools you might find out there simply built on top of their infrastructure and they charge an unreasonable margin on top. Personally, I recommend using AWS. It's the biggest by far and you can save a whole lot of money by using it directly instead of all those other smaller tools. Now, while that being said, there's another movement going on. You've probably noticed that more and more tech businesses, including bootstrap startups and indie creators, are moving away from the cloud entirely. Even the big cloud platforms like AWS still have unpredictable prices 
lack of transparency and simplicity in how they charge their customers. And down the line, for a lot of small companies, it's just too expensive for what you get. People want something smaller, simpler, more efficient, and more affordable in a lot of ways like it was before the era of the cloud. So I want to share a super cool alternative. It's called Coolify. Coolify is a collection of tools that make up most of the things you get in the cloud, but it's open source and you can self-host it. It's very easy and intuitive to use and you can install it more or less anywhere you want. I suggest renting a machine on Hetzner and install Coolify on it. Now you have your own little cloud for $50 a month, fixed price, everything included. It is really awesome. My SaaS portfolio is currently hosted on AWS, but we're actually in the process of leaving the cloud too. And we're using a dedicated server on Hetzner for this. I can highly recommend it. Now, let's take a look at some of the more operational parts. Down the line, you need to use some automation, and this is one of the areas where no code really shines. Most likely, you've already been using tools like Zapier, Make, and Airtable. They are really great tools, but they also run expensive relatively fast. So I want to give you some low cost and free alternatives. Instead of using Zapier, take a look at Paply. It's very similar, but you can get access to Paply Connect on a lifetime purchase instead of paying Zapier every month. Paply covers a whole lot of integrations and it's very likely that they already have exactly what you need. Instead of Airtable, take a look at Baserow. It covers a lot of the same use cases as Airtable, and the best part is it's open source and you can self-host it, just like Coolify. And now you have a free Airtable, effectively. You also need to send out emails, and for this I recommend using AWS. They have a service called SES. Now, someone from AWS do need to approve of your use case before you can send out emails. But once you're approved, you'll get a higher deliverability than most other services. And it is ridiculously much more affordable than tools like SendGrid and MailChimp. And just as a small kicker here, Notion has an API. If you're like me, you also love using Notion. You can turn your Notion into a small DIY custom management system and newsletter editor. Because we're using SES to send out emails, we write them all in Notion. It's super easy to turn a Notion document into HTML, which we can use to send to our users. Same with blog posts. We write all our blog posts in Notion and simply use their API to generate the HTML for our websites. And Notion is, to a large extent, free. As a startup, there are at least four things you need to have covered. You need to post on social media. You need scroll-stopping visuals. You need to handle customer support. And you need to track where your traffic is coming from. If you want to use the industry-leading tools for this, it gets very expensive very, very fast. But I have something amazing to share with you. We're launching Founderstack. This is the ultimate software stack for founders, and it includes access to the full suite of SaaS tools my team and I have worked tirelessly in the past four years to build. And here's the best part. This is a lifetime deal. You will get instant lifetime access to VDive, 8Base, LinkDrip, and TinyQE for a single one-time purchase. It's a complete solution for your startup covering social media marketing, AI chat and ticket support, link shortening, and access to more than 5,000 professionally crafted design templates. Yours forever for a single one-time purchase. And call me crazy, but there's more. My team and I are already working on two new SaaS products that we're launching in 2025. And if you buy Founderstack today, you will automatically get lifetime access to these two new tools when they launch. Head over to founderstack.pro and log in this deal today. Now, let's shift our focus and talk about marketing. We're so fortunate to live in a time where everyone can do marketing completely for free. So I want to share some of my favorite marketing channels you can use on a budget. But remember, the freer it is, the harder it is. Nothing is cheap and easy at the same time. So what you save in cash, you have to put down in time and effort instead. There is no way around that. The first category is content. And in my experience, the best place to reach people for free is here on YouTube. There are more than 120 million people watching 1 billion hours of content on this platform every single day. Video content is the future. I think most marketers agree on this. 
What some people tend to disagree on is the matter of long form versus short form content. It's probably true that some short form content has the potential to reach more people, but data strongly suggests that it doesn't have nearly as big of an impact on the viewer as long form content has. It's all about trust. There's a study that suggests that it takes 40 to 60 hours to form a friendship. And in the online version, this is what's called a parasocial relationship, which basically means that the feeling of knowing someone only goes one way. For instance, I'm here talking to a camera right now. And truth is, I probably don't know who you are. But if you've been watching my content for a while, you might almost feel like you know me. And you might feel this way with a lot of your favorite creators. This is a parasocial relationship and it's an incredibly strong component in marketing. But with short form content, it's difficult to have viewers consume 40 to 60 hours of you on video. It's just much easier to achieve with long form content. So simply put, it builds a connection and it builds trust much more effectively. The written equivalent of this is blog posts and articles. So if you're not comfortable being on camera, you can achieve a similar effect by writing long form content. Medium is a super popular platform and it's available to everyone. You can also choose social media platforms like LinkedIn or Reddit, both platforms with massive user bases and people there are used to consume longer posts. You can even write articles on LinkedIn. Of course, you can still post on places like Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky and so on. They're great but don't make these platforms your first priority. Stick to places where you can write longer posts and where the average user typically has a bit more patience to sit and read. The next marketing channel is SEO. Of course, writing blog posts, targeting long tail keywords with lower search volume so you can compete is the standard approach to using SEO. It's the way most people do it. And I'm not saying it's bad. Many startups, both big and small, use this channel to drive traffic and you probably should too. But there's another approach to SEO that I don't hear people mention that often. And especially if you're a developer, you will probably love this. It's an approach marketers call engineering as marketing, or as I like to call it, micro products. The idea is very simple. Instead of showing up on Google with an article when people search, you show up with a small tool. For instance, if I search for LinkedIn video download, I'll see free tools from SaaS related to social media. If I search for profit margin calculator, tools like Shopify will show up with a small free tool. And these tools are very helpful for SEO. They drive traffic, they get shared often, and they help build up overall domain authority. And of course, when people visit these tools, there's often some call to action that prompts the visitor to try out the full solution. So if you know how to put small tools like this together, whether it's code or no code, it's an excellent organic marketing strategy. But how do you figure out which keywords to target? You probably know tools like Arefs and SEMrush, and they certainly makes life easier. But since we're on a budget here, let me show you an easier way. Go to Google, start writing a few relevant words and see what Google suggests after those words. The first five suggestions are probably pretty good long tail keywords to show up on if you can. Yeah, it's that simple. I recommend that you get at least content and SEO nailed down. But on top of that, there are a few approaches you can use to improve your reach. One way is to build a viral loop into your product. There are countless ways this can be done, and it can be as simple as a powered buy link on your forms, embeds or widgets, or in emails that your service sends on behalf of your users. On one of my products, 8Base, there's a powered buy link on our chat widget, which people put on the website. And it has a link at the bottom of the support emails users send when they use our product. In this way, users bring in more users who bring in more users, and so on. Another really effective way to have users promote your product is by using affiliate marketing. In this way, you share some of the revenue each new user brings in, but you aren't paying anything upfront. So if you're on a budget, this can be a really effective way to get your product off ground. I've seen some startups offer 30, 40, even 50% of the revenue of each new subscriber they bring recurringly. And it's really something that motivates affiliate partners to go that extra mile to promote your product. Finally, if all you have to get started is your phone, start reaching out to people. Try to be helpful create a network. This is something you should do before you start building your product. You want to create a relationship with people and give before you ask. So if you haven't launched your first product yet, start doing that today. 
And in order to create a small recurring revenue stream to get you started, check out these four business ideas that will get you to a $1,000 MRR fast. Thanks for watching.